Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks and today we've got the pleasure of watching Striker 2251 from the European server playing in there. Shh, God, that's the Spatuk, the TVP, it's the only way to call it, right? The Spatuk. Uh, this is a tier 8 Czechoslovakian tank destroyer and this thing has, I think it's the highest damage per minute in the game, albeit if it's able to penetrate its high explosive rounds because its alpha damage on its HE steps up from 250 up to 420 with 100 millimeters of penetration. So if you do if you do get to shoot glass cannon tanks, man, the Spatuk is an absolute beast. So Striker today is going to show you pretty much the perfect example of calm, calculated gameplay and knowing just how long they have to wait before it is their time to strike, right? Yeah, because we're watching Striker 2251 here. I wonder how... Uh, many more puns I can be able to get through this replay. You know, there's there's a lot of puns around striking, right? In Inside life, as well as also inside World of Tanks. But Striker has started in a position which I've seen quite a lot of players been using recently. Light tanks wise, I wouldn't really recommend going here, because with a light tank what you want to do is you want to try and make your way along the bush lines to try and stop the opposing light tank from doing that. However, when you're playing in the Spatuk, it's a, it's a little bit more tricky because you're quite a large tank. You don't really have the best of camo. Its moving camo is 9.63, but its stationary camo is very good at 16. So when you're stationary in this tank, it's half decent. Not so good when you're moving. The places that I would personally like to take this vehicle is I would make my way up over here where the Fosch 155 is. And you know what? I can just use a free cam to go and show you exactly. I'd probably make my way over towards these bushes. And if you're a little bit sneaky, what you can also do, especially with the Spatuk with its HE rounds, is if you fire and you aim just right here behind this tree, you can get the tree to splash down here. And even though Wargaming have nerfed high explosive rounds with uh, their ability to be able to splash on enemy vehicles' armor, they haven't nerfed their ability to knock down trees or buildings with regards to splashing. So if you knock this tree down here, and you can even do this one as well afterwards, to it will land pretty much where the Fosh 155 is. And then you get a whole nice bush line, which you can just sit in and be able to spot your opponents as they advance up. And through all of these gaps that you see in the bushes along here, you can quite often manage to get some spots. However, Striker has got a different strategy altogether. Striker's strategy instead is to sit in a bush that not a lot of people think about, high up here. And it's amazing that they're going to stay hidden. Not only are they spotting towards the west here and seeing tanks like the Turtle, they've also got vision over towards where the Tiger will be towards the center of this map. And so this position, it's very good. I probably recommend to go here in like your larger medium tanks, or in this case, your larger tank destroyers just to have a different angle. But also keep in mind that when you do this, you're not really going to be able to fire. Although personally, I would have fired. And look at that. Striker just got 1,220 spotting against the HWK-30 on the enemy team. And that is because that HWK-30, they wanted to advance along that bush line. But unfortunately for them, the bushes were a little bit too thin and Striker managed to get the uh, the jump on them. All it takes is one mistake out of this bush line or being in a fat German light tank like the HWK-30 here. And that's all she wrote for the vision on the enemy team. And that, without a shadow of a doubt, is going to give Striker's team a chance to be able to get back into this. However, I want to clarify before I start to see every light tank in the game going and sitting in the position that Striker is in. It's very defensive, and if you play against a very good light tank player, um, maybe a high tier light tank, or maybe something like a manticore, then if you allow the enemy light tank to go to like where that turtle was, it's pretty much done for your team. Because the light tank will light up the TDs, and their TDs will be able to sit back more in these kinds of positions, and then, yeah, the game is just absolutely done. So please, if you're in a light tank or if you're in a very well camoed medium and you run like an exhaust and a vision system towards the high tier, please still try and contest the bush line along the, the two. However, what Strike is showing is that as a bottom tier tank destroyer, you can still be very useful in a position like this or up in the position that I highlighted if you know how to knock down the trees to provide that second line of vision. And quite often that second line of vision is the one that matters. And Strikers up to 3,600 combined here without having to fire a shot. Absolutely perfect. What more can you want? Especially when you're playing a premium tank destroyer. Not only will Striker be making good credits here, 
he's also pretty much single-handedly keeping his team in this game with that 3,600 spotting. And it's not done yet, as the Char Future 4, a vehicle which will usually be very sneaky, now gets lit up, and all Striker has to hope now is that their Forest Spirit and the 122 TM at the back are going to be able to get some shots in. But again, we're seeing the problem with this position. And that is that unless the vision is consistent, unless the you stop your opponents from even getting towards that F2 area, as soon as you leave your you lose your gun line at the back and they lose the, uh, the possibility to be up in the hills, then it can be a little bit ugly. So it's still very important, I, I'm going to say this multiple times, to contest the vision on the two line, either from that G1 area or in the bushes along the two line, because the majority of the times, if your opponents do manage to advance to get vision on your back row of tank destroyers, you're not going to be in a, in a position like Striker's team is here to still be able to defend it. And unfortunately, this game seems to be going, running away from Striker here. They're down by 5,000 hit points. They've managed to... Uh, they're also down by a frag. But luckily, with the WT Alf Panzer IV coming forwards and getting spotted, that's some good news there. The WT Alf Panzer IV just gets ripped apart, and that is some good marksmanship. Striker's team are not Stormtroopers. And that's 1,600 spotting. Interestingly, did you see how as soon as Striker moved, he got spotted? And that's not because he left the bush. It's because when you move in your tank destroyers, you lose a huge amount of camo. Your base camo going from 16 down to below 10, which means you're pretty much losing like 20% or even like 30% of your camo rating, maybe even 40% of your camo rating in this vehicle. And that is too much to lose as you will still get spotted by more of some more of the sneaky tanks on the enemy team. So with that entire tank, of the WTF Panzer IV lost, and also now with the TT-130M falling apart, Striker's team is starting to look like they're back in it. They're ahead by a frag, but they're still down by 2,000 hit points. Striker is now at 6,000 combined without having to lose any of their hit points. But they've used up half of the allotted time in this game to be able to achieve that. One thing I've really been learning on Prokhorovka recently is that I think for a while, probably for about six months or a year, I forgot how to play Prokhorovka. And I got so good at the bush line that I thought that I would play the bush line early every single time. And what I'm realizing on Prokhorovka is that the majority of the time, if you wait for pretty much the first seven, eight minutes, that means that you're still going to have half the game left to be able to play around with but usually about half of the enemy players are not going to be patient and they will have pushed. And so I thoroughly recommend until you have an overwhelming advantage where, for example, you're in a light tank, you've got the light tank out on the enemy team, that you just play very defensively on Prokhorovka early. You don't have to play that defensively on Malinovka. It's definitely a more progressive map where when you're spotted, there are still ridge lines to be able to fall back behind. There are still positions that you can be able to survive on Malinovka. But on Prokhorovka, it's really a case of when you get lit up, oh, it's ugly. One thing that's quite interesting here is, as we can see in the top right-hand corner, Striker 2251 is actually playing a tested map. That tested map is that it's testing the dynamic uh, gameplay that can happen in this very static game of World of Tanks, right? Striker so much doesn't want their 122TM to pull, pull, push forwards here. They're actually telling them to fall back twice. But yeah, what their di dynamic maps are is sometimes a plane will crash and be able to get rid of some of the bushes in that position. But that actually hasn't happened. It hasn't activated. And quite good for Striker if that's the case. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it looks like Striker has now found the time to strike. The perfect time to strike in this game of World of Tanks. The 122TM going forwards, draining the char. Striker finishes off the T-54, finishes off the Char Future 4, and now goes to town on the ISM as well. One shot in, forwards, backwards, trying to dodge, doesn't manage to. Still getting vision for the Forest Spirit or the Udes at the back. Another shot in, and that is what 2,700 base damage per minute at tier 8 looks like. What an absolute monster vehicle, especially with a gun rammer on this vehicle and a premium consumable. This thing gets going. And just like that, Striker waited for the perfect opportunity to push the tempo. And the glass cannon nature of the TVP doesn't matter if they're on low health or if they're in autoloaders that are reloading or having to shut down a medium tank that made a valiant push. 
So while Stryker was telling the 122TM to fall back there, I think they should probably actually be thanking the 122TM for their push play. And accordingly now, with 8,700 combined to their name, Stryker still has 755 hit points to build to see if they can get into this game. But they're going to have to start to hurry up, and that is because the Gorilla just shut down the Centurion from an unknown location. But considering that we heard the... Uh, the destruction of that Century in 7-1 from pretty much across the map, that means there's no gorilla in the corner. But there could be a Nomad in this situation. So, it looks like Striker outspots the T-62A, also spots a Tiger 2. The Tiger 2 is behind a ridgeline, so they shouldn't be able to spot Striker here. And Striker puts a good shell through the T-62A, loading AP now, which is the right thing to do, as there is some bushes and some rubble in the way between the T-62A. However, misses the second shot, maybe hits the third, I saw a tri like a tiny little twig fall there as well, so the T-62A has managed to cross as far as I can tell, and there he is. They took a shot, the Nomad and the Tiger, looks like they actually spot Striker. Remember this tank doesn't have very good camera rating unless you use an exhaust when you're moving. And Striker tanks a shell from the T-62A, now making them a one-shot, unfortunately for the Guard and for the Nomad, but up to over 9,000 combined with some great destructive play there against the T-62A and they need to hurry up they got three and a half minutes left and there's 5,500 hit points on the enemy team realistically you need at least a minute for every thousand to two thousand hit points that the enemy team have so this is right on the cusp as to whether Striker is going to be able to get their team back into this one but just what a mammoth game so far 9,000 combined this would be a fantastic game if I was playing a tier 10 light tank let alone Striker playing a tier 8 bottom tier tank destroyer on this map but they got a lot left to do in this game if they want to be able to get it three minutes left a full health griller who has now been spotted up towards the northeast although now we don't know whether the guard and the griller are actually full health because remember they're outside the render distance and while unfortunately you can't see that on it anymore on the mini map not because i've disabled it but because unfortunately once you use the free cam it no longer allows you to use the rings on the mini map uh, Striker is going to have to get closer towards this Tiger 2 or the Nomad to be able to find out whether they'll spot them and then get their team going. There's no one in the center. All there is is a Forest Spirit and a Yudes who have done some really good damaging shots for Striker. But unfortunately, they're not going to be in a position where they're going to be able to help Striker out to get this one down. So the siren is about to go off in 10 seconds from now, alerting Striker to the fact that they should really get on with it in this game. But what do you want Striker to do? It's not like Striker can just drive out in front of the Nomad, right? Looks like the Tiger 2 spots Striker. The Nomad spots Striker as well. But because the Nomad fired, that means they get lit up. They lost the camera rating and Striker manages to put one shot in, two shots in. Man, this tank has got such lovely gun handling for a tank destroyer. But you know what, 250 alpha damage at tier 8, it definitely sucks. But when you've got that rate of fire, man, it does definitely stack up. So the Nomad is now down to half hit points. We're not sure whether the Yudez got a shot into the Nomad or not. And it's just BDAP here in this Tiger 2, who's really the glue keeping the enemy team together. And I have to admit, how are they going to manage to get this done now? I feel like Striker needs to keep pushing the tempo, maybe try and flank towards the south to be able to get the angle on the Tiger 2. But really, that's what you'd hope the Udez would have done, right? The Udez, on all of their hit points, should have made their way towards the center to get the shots into the Tiger 2 to be able to allow Striker's team to be able to push forwards. And it's just not been the case. The Udez, luckily, looks like they're doing it. Although, is it going to be too late for the game? The Udez still failing to commit all of their hit points towards the center. But it looks like the Tiger 2 finally gets lit up and the Udez is now doing the work. And because the Tiger 2 has to turn their turret to away from the Forest Spirit and away from Striker, that means they get shut down. And now with 43 seconds left on the game, Striker's got to risk it for the biscuit, right? Wow, the guard just lost their entire tank. They were probably a one-shot on the hill. The Skoda managing to finish them off. And Striker also finishes off the Nomad who foolishly poked to try and finish off the Forest Spirit. So now they've got 24 seconds left to try and finish off a Gorilla. So what we have to pray for here is that Striker spots the Gorilla and the Gorilla's on no hit points. 13 seconds, 12, 11, 10, 9... Eight. Oh no, it's 1,300 hit points. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Is it a win? 
Is it a win? It's saying victory at the top of the screen. But I feel like the bell should have been sounded and that definitely felt like it was an after punch. It felt like that strike came in after the match should have ended. But it is saying victory and the post game stats are saying the same thing. Striker won this game literally at 15 minutes of a 15 minute game. To be able to achieve that, Striker had to do 3,600 damage and 9,800 assistance. That's right, ladies and gents, this was a 13,000 combined game for the TVP100. Do you know what's really pathetic about WN8 as well? This was only 7,000 WN8 because spotting doesn't count for WN8. Uh, don't get me wrong, a 7,000 game is very good. But it's not 2,413 base experience good. This is one of the highest base experience games I have ever seen in a tier 8 premium. What an absolute phenomenal round. And of course, as it's a premium tank, even though Striker wasn't running a premium account, they still make 165,000 credits profit. What an absolute monster carry here for Striker in their TVP100. What this shows you is that... Biding your time is quite often the right thing to do. Now, I feel that Striker might have uh, abided their time just a little bit too much in this game. But hell, who am I to say anything with this absolute monster game of World of Tanks? Not only did Striker have to have this wonderful combined, they also picked up a top gun for those six kills, a patrol duty, and a Helonen's medal for destroying two tanks that are at least two tiers higher than Striker's vehicle. And considering that I don't think there were even that many tier 10 tanks in this game, that's a tricky one to be able to take down. So Striker 2251, congratulations to you on one of the most exciting games of the year and also one of the highest experience games of the year. It was a monster round in your TVP 100, exactly how you should be playing your Spatuk. And what I loved about this game was that well-timed strike right in the center of it, which completely changed the outcome of this round of World of Tanks. So thank you so much to you, Striker, for uploading your replay on the whatrecord.com website. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I hope all of you out there did as well. If you did, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're watching this video as it's released on Monday, I'm going live all day now on twitch.tv forward slash quickiebaby, where I'll be playing a little bit of Steel Hunter, but I'll also be giving out some new drops so you can get some free experience, crew experience boosters, some regular experience boosters, as well as also a bunch of consumables. So really looking forward to seeing you all live right now. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.